This time on Hot Rod Unlimited, the most mind-blowing car show anywhere. 300 former Hot Rod Magazine feature cars dating all the way back to 1948. Hot Rod Magazine was founded by Robert E. Peterson in 1948, so 2013 is the 65th anniversary. To celebrate that, the staff decided to throw a show like none other. We are going to gather together as many former magazine feature and cover cars as we possibly can, and the challenge is going to be getting them all in the same place at the same time. The thing that was going to make this show really cool is how there's a range of cars dating all the way back to 1948 and the very first issue and stretching into our most recent issue. We are going to have a little bit over 300 feature cars indoors at this show and that has got to be the only time ever that this many historic hot rods have been in the same place. This is the Hot Rod Homecoming. The greatest thing about this event is guys like me that really care about what happens to these cars after they're photographed, we get to find out the story, you know, since then. This thing was in the magazine years ago. It goes even quicker than it did when it was in the magazine, which means if I was in love with it then, I'm in lust with it now. So, thoroughly enjoying myself today. Some of the cars are absolutely untouched since they were featured in the magazine and they've been neglected. So we're seeing some real patina like cracked paint and oxidized mags and things like that. But we really like those cars because they represent unaltered history. That is exactly the way they were when they were in the magazine. So what's really cool about the event for me is that I get to see guys, cars that I had only read about or were in the magazine before I was born. And to see them in real life, I learned so much more about them. Uh, I got to meet the owner of the Penske Sunoco Camaro that was driven by Mark Donahue in 1968. And be able to talk to him and learn that he still races that thing today. He was in the magazine 20 years ago. That's just amazing. It gave me goosebumps when he first told me about the car. Hot Rod Magazine uh, uh, used this car in June of 1988. It was uh, the first centerfold that they did uh, where they actually uh, folded out the cover like, uh, like Playboy Magazine did. Seeing the cars that you read about and seeing the cars that you learned about and lusted after, um, you know, it was very interesting to walk around and see all the variety of cars that have been in the magazine over the years. My name is Philippe Dan. I worked at Hot Rod from September 1986 to February 1989. This is a complete surprise. You know, I came here expecting to see Scott Sullivan. You know, he's right around the corner, and I walk past and I see Guy Ruchonnet's car. I featured this car back in 1989. And it was just like such a surprise to see it, that the car still exists and it's here. My story is, you know, posted right next to the car. I'm blown away. This show wasn't just about the cars, but also the people. We had some of the biggest names in the history of hot rodding, like Don Perdome and Tommy Ivo and people like that. But there were also some little guys whose name you would never know, but they're impressive because they've owned the same car for 50 years. They've built a whole bunch of cars and they give that perspective, which they were able to sort of translate to the younger generation. I have this magazine hanging up in my bedroom at home. And so this is pretty rad to see this car, obviously it's been fixed, and to see that the car is back together and they're still racing, it's pretty cool. It's great being here because these are the true enthusiasts. These are the folks that sleep, eat, and breathe performance, and uh, Chevrolet just loves being a part of that. We've got Courtney Hansen and Linda Vaughn here signing autographs, and we just love being a part of Hot Rod Magazine, and to be able to come out here and celebrate 65 years is an incredible honor. All these cars are together under the same roof, uh, it's huge because I've got cars from customers from around the country here. It's neat to have them all in the same room hanging out and, and all of us are one big family and it is because of Hot Rod Magazine. This kind of event is pretty exciting. It's a little hard on the legs and working all those crouching muscles because you just sort of walk two feet and just get down and take another photo. but. It's well worth it because you get to see all kinds of cool stuff. Like this car, Keats Kaiser, he built it himself. A lot of the people that I've talked to have told me about how the scene used to be a lot about guys getting together, having a couple of beers, and working on the cars. If you had a friend and he knew how to paint, he'd help you paint your car. But if you knew how to weld, you'd help him put floor pans in his, and that was sort of how it all worked out.
Many people said that the amazing thing about this show was not just that these were feature cars, but that they were real cars. Cars that were built by guys with their own hands, whether it was last week or 40, 50 years ago. It's impossible to even convey on video how cool this was. But we can look at a few of the specific cars that were just legendary. Here's Stuart Hilborn's Lakester that he built as a teenager, and in fact it appeared on the April 48 cover photographed in his parents' driveway. Hilborn was the inventor of Hilborn fuel injection, and this Lakester was the first car to run more than 150 miles an hour on the SoCal dry lakes. This is Tom the Mongoose McEwen's ramp truck that he used to haul his funny car around back in the days when he and Don Perdome were running under the Hot Wheels banner on the Wildlife Tour. It was on the August 70 cover of the magazine along with his funny car which is also here. This thing was originally built by Chrysler for Sox and Martin's race team but then became Mongoose's truck and now it's owned by Don Perdome who also restored it. Steve Strope built this Fastback Mustang for a really nice guy from Texas. And what makes this car special is it's got an authentic Ford Indy overhead cam V8. There's maybe 15, 20 of them in the world, and I don't know how he got his hands on one, but somehow he talked Ed Pink into putting one together for this car. And this is Steve's interpretation of what would happen if a European rally car team called up Ford in the 60s and said, hey, we want to race a Mustang. This is probably what it would look like, and it's amazing. This is Eddie Miller's Lakester that appeared on the August 1950 cover of the magazine. And in addition to the weird bodywork, it was unusual in that it was powered by a Pontiac Flathead 6 that was laid over 30 degrees. It's currently owned by the Ferguson family who's still active in SCTA racing on the SoCal Dry Lakes. And also Jim Miller is still active and he happens to be Eddie Miller's son. TV Tommy Ivo has been a big name in drag racing forever, and this car is significant because it was his first dragster where he ran nitromethane. He always ran gasoline before that. Built this in about 1962 with Dave Zuschel, and eventually added this really swoopy bodywork, and the car became the first to run 190 and a quarter mile, and also the first in the eights. It was the January 64 cover car. I like race cars. I like all race cars, but I especially like old race cars. This is an extremely unusual car, something I've never seen before. It's a Buick-powered, Buick funny car. There were only two ever made, and this is the only one that survives. It was splash pulled off of an actual Buick that was taken off a dealership floor, made to run to represent Buick dealers. It's been rescued. It's back with the original owner's son. And that's a story we're hearing a lot here at the Hot Rod Homecoming is, my dad had a car like this. I learned to drive in a car just like this, and uh, it really brings back a lot of memories for them. Chevrolet Performance is the title sponsor of the show, and our co-sponsor is Edelbrock, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary here at the show. Vic Edelbrock brought out his 67 Camaro, which was the original Hot Rod Magazine test car. This was the first Camaro on the West Coast, and the first one to have a big block in it. We also had a bunch of cars from the 70s and 80s, and it was interesting to see how those street machine era cars have fared over the years. Some of them were changed. This one happens to be untouched. It's David Cohen's vet from the May 81 issue, and the candy paint is all wrinkled on it. It's still got the side pipes. It was just a cool representation of exactly what we were looking at in 1981. The most amazing experience at the homecoming was the autograph session that we had one evening. We had all sorts of heroes there signing books and posters. One of the most impressive was Bob DeLevo, who was the photo director for Hot Rod for decades. But we also had racers like Don Perdome and Roland Leong, engine builder Ed Pink, George Barris was there, Gail Banks, Linda Vaughn, Courtney Hansen. It was really amazing. It just went on and on. And the autograph line did not slow down for two and a half hours. Seeing all these cars that uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, been in covers of magazines and all that, uh, it's uh, overwhelming, overwhelming. We had so much fun running together with all these things, and to have it all gathered in one place like this is just, well, it's something you're just not gonna see again, basically. The truly amazing part about this event is that we're seeing generations of cars that guys like myself have really never seen before. This is a, a pretty amazing once-in-a-lifetime event we're uh, being part of here. It's very cool to come here. I mean, I think this is uh, the first time show and of its kind and to see all these cars that we've dreamed about. I mean, there's cars that I saw in the magazine before I worked for the magazine. 
and to see that they're still around and to see them here gathered in, in one hall and outside, it, it's a wonderful idea and it's fantastic because everybody wonders what happened to those cars. And to see them here, it's fantastic. It's memory lane, every aisle I'm going down. Stuff that I grew up looking at in the magazines before I ever moved out here, before I ever had a shop. Ooh, I remember that one. Ooh, I remember that one. And that is incredible. That is such an opportunity. Uh, and it's amazing that they were able to put this together and have such a phenomenal grouping of cars. We may not be around uh, the next time something like this happens, but I'm, I'm very honored to be part of it.